We started off in 2011 with the um, radio frequency spiral device and then um, very shortly after that also got enrolled into ultrasound technology to do renal denovation. Since then we've performed over 350 procedures and from quite very early on we also had a strong scientific interest. We did a sham control trial in patients with mild hypertension and then we did another randomized control trial where we compared three different approaches to renal innovation, two with radio frequency and one with ultrasound innovation. So both we did clinical cases, but also trials and research projects. So at the time we see that in general, the, the body of evidence for renal denervation is growing and growing. And uh, this is also true for ultrasound renal denervation. We do have the results of the Radiance solo trial. We personally, uh, personally have the results of the Radisson trial. That was a trial where we, um, randomized trial where we um, compared three different approaches to renal denervation. In two arms, radio frequency was used and in one, ultrasound was used and we found that the ultrasound arm was the arm with the, with the highest magnitude of rock pressure reduction. There was about 11 millimeters of mercury when looking at ABPM measurements. And this is pretty much in the range of what we see in Radiance, Radiance Solo and then Radiance Solo crossover as well. Again, 11 to um, 12 millimeters of mercury and this at three and also at six months. So this is a significant reduction in blood pressure that has been now shown in several independent trials. And this is not just an acute effect, but seems to um, last at least when we look at six months follow up. Yeah, ultrasound innovation combines three very important aspects for that procedure. And that is safety, that is efficacy, and its ease of use. The combination of ultrasound with um, a balloon-based system, which allows for cooling, um, appears to be a very good combination, which allows you to, with the cooling, to preserve the endothelium and therefore prevent any damage to the renal artery, but at the same time using ultrasound, which provides a penetration depth, allowing you to apply the energy reaching the nerves you, you want to, to target at a penetration depth of about six to seven millimeters. This is where we expect to, um, to, to reach them and actually cause the blood pressure reduction. And because of that penetration, Depth, it is sufficient to apply two to three ablations in the main renal artery. These ablations, they take seven seconds, which is extremely fast. And this is, this is important not only for the operator, but um, most important for the patients. We have results now of several independent sham control trials. They're all pointing towards the same direction. Renal denervation can reduce blood pressure and that's certainly superior to a sham, sham procedure. And that works not only in patients who've been already on drugs, but also in patients who were drug naive. So in my point of view, there's no doubt at that point in time that the overall concept of renal denervation works. That was the task we had to fulfill. And I think now we enter the next, the next phase, which is a careful transition of that early um, stage into clinical routine. And the questions which will come up now are the ones, how do we select patients for that procedure? Should it be the ones who are at very high risk or the ones at lower risk who are already on drugs? Or can we also approach those without any drugs? I assume that Many would think that at the moment this is more procedure for patients who have uncontrolled hypertension on several drugs. And we do have data for that. But at the same time, I think it's important to realize that we could, should also consider patient preference. 
And in our experience, there are many patients who rather have one intervention and then not have to take any drugs for the future. So these things we have to consider now when we transform that procedure into clinical routine, but at the same time, we have to combine it with ongoing, well-designed clinical trials.